So, welcome everyone to another IFX webinar. Um, it's about a year ago that we sat here and we introduced the Brexit barometer to you. Uh, back then, uh, in May of last year, sterling euro was dealing up at 130. Uh, and we introduced the barometer saying that if Brexit were to happen, we would expect to see sterling sell off aggressively to levels uh, below 110. Uh, if we were to remain, then sterling would rally a little bit up towards 135. And indeed, as we all know, uh, we did decide to exit, uh, and we saw lows just below 110 at 109.40 uh, back in October of last year. Since then, sterling has recovered, uh, and more so since uh, Theresa May has announced this snap election. Uh, the expectations are that the Conservatives will get a few more seats uh, than they have currently in Parliament, and this is seen as a positive for sterling. So, what we've done today, or what we're going to do today, is introduce the cytometer to you. And I'm going to pass over to Andy to talk about it. So, yeah, so uh, very much in line with the format of our Brexit barometer, our cytometer uh, is really about trying to sort of give a, a guidance, a gauge as to what we expect in terms of the impact of sterling on the outcome of the election results. So, as you say, uh, at the moment the market's currently really forecasting or expecting that Conservatives will gain pretty much in large majority. So we feel that the neutral level for sterling, in other words, the level at which the market wouldn't really be too phased either way in terms of numbers, would be if they were to get a 100 seat majority. So at that level, if that's the outcome, they get 100 seats versus their current majority of 17, that would largely be neutral for, for sterling. That's kind of probably what the market's really base case scenario is, we think. Um, in the scenario where they uh, gain more or less seats than that, we factored in that around a 10 seat uh, plus or minus away from the 100 mark is going to represent probably a 1% change in sterling. So in other words, if they get 10 seats less than 100, i.e. 90, we could expect sterling to fall by 1%. And we feel that the range on this is probably 5% either side of 100. So in other words, if we're trading roughly at the 117 mark at the moment, you've got the potential up towards sort of 123 on the upside and on the downside down towards about 111, 112 areas. Okay. Okay, so, you know, not so exaggerated risks as Brexit, because obviously a general election isn't going to give up, because we do ha regularly have uh, general elections. The thing about the referendum last year is it was a once-in-a-generation uh, vote. Uh, there are obviously some curveballs which we should always watch out for. So the curveball would be if the Conservatives don't win. Uh, if the you know, Labour were to win, or there'd be some form of Labour, Lib Dem uh, coalition. Uh, we think on the back of that, Sterling would drop off quite dramatically, uh, we're talking you know, 5, 6, 7 percent, uh, and the reason being is that Labour is seen as the party you spend and therefore don't have so much control over the public deficit, and if the deficit enlarges, that's, that's negative for Sterling. So. And I think that also brings in an, an additional level of uncertainty around the whole Brexit negotiations. So far we've had Theresa May and her team dealing with the Europeans and they've you know, set out their stall, so to speak, whereas Labour has yet we haven't really heard that much from them on this area, so I think it would take us back to almost step one with the Brexit negotiations. Um, so looking just further ahead then, obviously over the yeah. next few weeks, um, you know, I think certainly the polling is going to be key, um, as ever, you know, it will continue to influence sterling because of, let's say, the market expectations of what this majority is going to be. Um, but it's important to not forget that um, we have, of course, other events in the pipeline that are also going to be impactful and actually, the first one of those is uh, it's going to be on the actual day of the election, which is the ECB next meeting, where potentially they may announce some reduction in stimulus, followed by a week later, the Federal Reserve, where they may hike interest rates again. Um, and on the political side of that, we've of course got developments in France with the new Prime Minister. He's yet to set out his agenda, so we'll see how things pan out there. And of course, the political upheaval that we're seeing in the States at the moment with Donald Trump. And just, of course, last night there was a special council announced uh, to investigate meddling in the uh, election alongside any potential misdoings of the president around his relationship with Comey and indeed his subsequent firing of the FBI director. Yeah, so lots to watch out for. Uh, June the 8th, obviously, the outcome will come out early morning of June the 9th. Uh, and then all these other uncertainties are unfolding as the year goes on. So we're just building the case again to make sure you review your exposures and look to place some hedging in place before it's too late. Thanks very much.